Okay, hi guys. Um, today I'm going to show you how to change a radiator for a, a larger one. Um, if you've got a small rad, a bit too small like we've got here uh, in our bathroom, um, I'm going to change it for this new bigger one. Uh, this is a double peak invector, a lot more heat. Um, this one was always a little bit too small. Um, so I'm going to show you how to, how to change this one for a bigger one. Um, this is for a, a, a suspended floor. Now luckily for me, um, I've got a void under my floor so I can get underneath but if, if you haven't then you will probably have to take the floorboard up to do this job. Um, so basically I'm going to take you through it. Um, I've already turned the water off, there's no point telling you to turn the water off, you know to turn the water off uh, and drain the heating system out. It will be on a radiator, the valve somewhere or near a pipe, near the door on the lowest level. Drain the water out once it's done then we'll proceed with taking this rad out. So first of all um, I'll go and do these unions here and get the, the rad off. Right, first thing we do then, uh, we've drained all the water out, uh, is undo these unions here. Here's the first rad valve, get your spanner on. Uh, if it's really tight, put a spanner on there to hold against. This one's not all that tight, so you know, you just easily undo it that way. That will release that nut there. I'll just get the camera in here for you, as you can see. That should slide off, which it will do. Now you can see it comes right away. Okay, we'll do the next one. That's this one here. Don't think you want old bits, no. Okay, if it's very tight, so you just get another spanner and I'll show you this. And that's just to hold against that one. Um, I usually use a pair of footprints and hold it on there. And then when you when you turn it, um, you put that one there um, and it will stop the pipe from breaking off at that union there. You don't want it to to bend down there so if it's really tight hold against and then just carry on doing once you've cracked it you can just carry on and get that pipe off of there pretty easily okay that's it now we're clear um we'll pull these out now we should be able to just lift this rad straight out so i'll put the camera down and we'll go here we go we're going to just lift them out of place now just get to end of the rad and we'll just slide him over there and over there and shoot it while we have an up. Well, a little trick I always do um, is to turn the radiator upside down when you've got it off. Uh, then if there's any black sludge, which they usually use in the bottom of the radiator, um, it will it will just stay up this end of the radiator. So just another little trick. So when you get it off, get, I'll put that on the panel and I'll just show you. Just turn your radiator upside down, like so. And then you won't get any more water out. Okay, so we'll get the rad out the out of the way now, and we'll proceed to the next stage. All right, um, got the radiator outside. You can see actually how it's it's rusted already. Look at that. I've only had this rad in a short while. You can see already it's rusted. Uh, the reason I brought it out just to show this little bit is I'm using these valves again, so I'm going to take these unions out. So if you're using the same radiator valves, you will need to, to remove these because uh, you're going to need them on the new one. They can be a little bit tight, uh, but if you just get your spanner on there and just chomp them out, so we'll get them both out. I won't bore you with getting these out. I'll get these out and we move on to the next, next thing. That one's got to come out as well, okay? So spanner on there and turn it out. Okay, and we'll, we'll get them out and move on. Well, the next job is to uh, remove the brackets because um, the new one, they certainly won't fit this so Get you around the right way and get these off. These brackets will be of no use to the new radiator at all. So we've got to get them off um, to get your, your drill or screwdriver and the brackets to get them out. Okay, uh, and once they're off, we can begin in earnest uh, with the fitting of the new rad. Uh, another thing I like to do is uh, get them the rad sort of made up ready for installation. Um, so when you get your rad, your new one, You'll find it's got plugs in the end um, on the tappings here. Uh, this is a Barlow rad. Uh, it's the ones with a little camera. I like the look well on top. Actually, looks quite smart. So I like the Barlow. Uh, but you have to get these out. They're just they're just little plastic caps. Again, get your spanner on there and just just whip them out. They've got to come out before we can put our fittings in. So just get those out of the way. Um, they're just a, a protection for the uh, thread of the radiator. So get those out. Um, when you get your, your radar, you'll find you get a little pack like this um, with the, the pieces in it. Now, this is the back of the rad. It depends where you want your bleed valve. Um, there's our bleed valve, bleed the radiator. 
and there's our cap for blanking off. Um, depends where you want it really, but uh, I, I prefer it um, at the other one. Because the next bit is to make these towers up, go in the bottom of the radiator for your radiator valves. Um, now you could even put PTFE tape around them, but being an old fashioned plumber like I am, I prefer to use hemp and it's, it's stuff like this. I'm not even sure if you can get it anymore actually, I've just still got loads of it left for my working days. Um, if you do use this, just you can literally thread it out like so uh, and then wind it around your thread like this. And this stuff never leaks, unlike PTFE which can still leak, I've had leaks of it, but I do know if I use this, I'm never going to leak and it always goes a lovely joint. Once I've got that round there, then I'll put a bit of boss white round it, uh, and that's this jointing compound there. You can see it there, Fernox jointing compound. A um, little bit of finger, put your finger in there, and just wind the boss white round like that. And then that's ready to go in our radiator at the bottom, the bottom feed, which we'll do now. Next stage. Okay, there we have our with no radiator on the wall um, and then we have our radiator and I'll just now show you the little towels I've made them in okay for the radiator valves um, now obviously this rat is bigger than the one that came off which is what this video is about now what I'm going to do um, to make it easy for me I'm going to line this radiator up with this pipe here because this is where I want the edge of my rad to be anyway um, and it will bring the rad the new one will come over here somewhere so I'm going to cut this pipe out here go under the floor and take this one out and I'm going to hang the rad and then bring it up in a new position and that's what I intend to do with this one so what I'm going to do now is cut this pipe out of the way uh, and then we'll proceed with marking out and hanging the radiator so we'll do that next right I've taken the pipe fitting off which is the valve uh, it's now off so I'm going to go under the floor now and cut that pipe off uh, and remove it from sight. So I'm going under the deck, which some of you may have a void, some may not. You may have to, if you haven't got a void like me, obviously you're going to have to take the floorboards up, which is a bit of a pain, but if you want it to look nice, you're going to have to do it. Now, there's my pipe that comes up there, and I'm going to cut him down here uh, and renew it up in a different position. So I'm going to sort of chop him off there. I've got the pipe sliced, uh, get a good bite on it. Get him cut through and just keep twisting. These are a handy tool. If you haven't used a pipe slice before, just keep going round and round. It saves sawing and ugly cuts on the pipe and a rough edge that doesn't doesn't seem to blend at all. But, uh, that just does it like that, you see, nice and easy. Right, so there's our pipe we cut off under the floor, and we can just remove it now and take it out of the way. That leaves our pipe clear now. We're up, uh, mounting the radio, which now, the way I like to fit my radio is I've done it for years like this. There's plenty of different ways of doing it. But I like to line up my fitting um, down there. So we'll, we'll go in that pipe. So you know roughly that is around about right to move into that pipe when you get it the right height. Um, I always get my brackets. Um, now you can have these off the wall more or you can have them around the other way uh, and have them closer to the wall. You know, if you go that way, um, you'll end up closer. I like them off the wall because I like to get clothes behind them. My wife likes to do a bit of washing. So that way there you can see, you know, it's close to the wall. And that way uh, you can see there's more room off the wall. Uh, and so that gives you a bigger gap around the back so that um, you can hang washing and towels and things on it. Especially as it's the bathroom. I'm going for a bigger rad in here by the way because I think the bathroom needs to be really warm. Uh, when you come out of a shower, come out of that cold shower, it well, it's a hot shower really. When you come out, it's nothing like a gold bath. It was never quite hot enough, so uh, that's why we decided to ditch our other one and go for a bigger uh, double panel convector like this. So anyway, we'll just mark this up now. Um, so you get your bracket on there, uh, and then you mark basically uh, from there to the center of where our pipe is, uh, and use that as a mark off the wall, marking the, that line on the wall, which I'll do now. Uh, well guys, I'll show you this um, little tricky bit now. Uh, a lot of people get stuck with this bit and uh, it's measuring the brackets. Um, I'll put one up because I've already measured it up, but if you're worried about getting it the correct height um, for that pipe, obviously you want to get it right so that it fits. Um, my little trick, what I do, is I measure uh, the pipe, the centre of that pipe from the floor, which as you can see there, 
is uh, is seven inches. I've got down properly measured it, um, seven inches. And if you put your bracket on like so, where it's going to go on the on the actual support of the back of the rad there, can you see it? The bracket. So that that's where it's going. Um, it doesn't matter if it's up the right way at the moment. Just get it so it's obviously the top way round. Um, and then what I do then, so we know it's seven inches to the centre there from the floor, is then measure the hole, which the pipe hole, which is, is roughly in the middle of this, this world there. The centre of the pipe is there. So looking at that roughly, <coughs> excuse me, it's inch and three quarters. So we add that together, seven, eight, eight and three quarters. Then you just measure from the floor up eight and three quarters to get to the bottom there, where that line is, then mark your line. And the other trick we're getting these right is it's just to line them across the red like that, um, the bracket, and you'll know that when you get to the wall that that is the line where you need it exactly on that line of the radiator. So then up, measure up on the floor, your eight and three quarters, and mark your bottom of your bracket. Um, and if you use a level, spirit level to get the line right, um, you'll know you'll be right. And obviously the next bracket is dead easy because you've just got to measure off the centre from that one there, excuse me, camera's going a bit wide, uh, from there to there, which we can see is 14 inches there. So, you know, the next mark is 14 inches along from there to our next bracket. I've already drilled the hole. Uh, it is a brick wall behind, that's so why I've broad plugged it. Uh, and uh, we'll hang that up and then carry on from there. So now then, we have our brackets in position. Uh, before you go hanging your rad, um, you'll find these little plastic bits in your accessory pack. Um, these are to really make the, the rad nice and quiet, hang properly, uh, and not rattle and vibrate on the on the railings. Now they, they just slot in like that. Can you see that? Just slot right down level, um, and so on with the next one. And they just slot right in, down like so. And we'll show you the top one that way on as you can see okay and just push them in down like so and they're in place and the same with the bottom one and uh, I'll put the camera down now because it's time to hang the radiator okay I've I've just lifted the rad in position um, and as you can see she's up there now um, now this pipe's going to be pretty easy to get in uh, we've just got to pull him inside uh, once I'll do that one up in a minute and that will leave our one that's got to be renewed from under the floor to come up in line with that pipe hole there so We'll line up this pipe and do this one. Right, well I've pulled that one up in and I've, I've done him up. He's all nice and tight, so you know, just make sure he's tight and he's okay. So that side is completed. Uh, now we move to this side and obviously, you know, we've, we've now got to bring a pipe up through the floor. There's our old hole that was, um, and now we're gonna drill a hole through here and bring a new pipe up from underneath. Right, next, put your valve on. I've just screwed it on uh, and mark the floor with a pencil um, exactly where you want the pipe to go. Right guys, um, here's my little drill. Um, I've got these flat bits on here um, that I'm going to use to drill this hole in. Uh, you get a nice point, you can put the drill point on the hole there uh, right in the middle and, and get her up and get her about right for drill. through okay so now it just remains to go under the floor and do the pipe and bring it up to the hole we do that next right then fellow plumbers here we are back under the floor um, and there you can see our pipe that was um, going up to the feed of the radiator now it goes into compression T here which which runs down there and is little valve on it and it empties the system outside which a nice idea. Uh, it's got a compression tee, should be soldered really, but uh, as it is compression, we're going to carry on with the compression beam. I've undone this nut um, and I'm going to turn this around so that it's like so flat. Because our hole is. is... Okay, uh, now what I've done is I've set up a piece of pipe like so and I've, I've put a bend on it. It roughly looks like it might be enough, so I'm going to try it. Well, as you can see, uh, I've made up an elbow there, and I've compressed an elbow. Okay, guys, I've stuck the elbow on, and I've set my bit of pipe, as you can see, to go up through the new hole. Well, there's the old one, there's the new one. So stick, I've stuck my elbow on. I'm not going to do anything up yet, not at this stage, till I've done the, the part up by the radiator, because I'm going to pull it out and cut it to size, which we'll do next. Right, I haven't tightened anything up as of yet, but there's our pipe cut to size. Um, let's slip an olive over and the nut. Well, I'll show you exactly 
there's the nut, let me, let me place our olive over there okay we've got our boss white this is very important to put this boss white on it can leak if you don't use it you can use ptfe but boss white is generally the right stuff to use well, they call it hawk white there's all sorts of names for it these days but uh, i use it I usually call it boss white i've done for years okay once that's on there then we stick a valve on uh, don't forget i think you also you would be very wise to put a bit around the valve as well a bit more boss white okay get that round that olive it makes it nice and look good you can do the nuts up easy then okay so we do our nut up there and you'll find it easy slides in there now and we can do our union up like so and we're now ready to give it a nip and spanner so i tend to hold against and just give it a nip up like that so see that's doing the job she's tight I'm going to tighten that one okay like so that's it and she's tight that's it a little nip when you feel it tight and nip on there just give it that last little bit of a nip and that's it okay now we're going to go under the floor tighten those few bits up down there and we should be ready well there you are there's the um the elbow that I've put on there. Uh, I'm going to tighten it up now. Now that the valve is straight and tight, uh, I'm going to tighten these unions up now with the spanner. You can see it there. I don't I need to show you that. that. Well, it just remains to tighten this fitting up now. This pipe that we've put up to our new radiator. Put your spanner on. Tighten up the two unions. Well, there we are. Uh, job's a good one. We're all done. Uh, just needs to tidy up now, fill in that little hole where our old pipe was. Um, fill it up now and uh, bleed the radiator and get the air out of the system and basically the job's a good one. Uh, and basically that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Plenty more tips on uh, YouTube for plumbing or anything. Derriton33, my channel. If you fancy subscribing, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye.